What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to go over something very simple, but that has been requested. So, Sarah Campbell asks, I can't seem to get my graph editor to look like yours. What am I doing wrong? After Effects beginner here, great video. Thank you, Sarah, for bringing up this issue. We talked a little bit more about what was going on. I'm pretty sure she figured it out, but this does bring the question. What the heck is the graph editor and what the heck is a speed graph, etc., etc.? So let's get started. Okay, so I already have After Effects opened up and I already have a couple of different animations that are all technically the same thing. So just hit play, and as you can see, they all move in some different dynamic way. Now, why is that? Now, if you look on the keyboard, or excuse me, if you look at the layers down here, they're all the same keyframes, but what makes them different? The graph editor makes them different, or the dynamicness of how the keyframes are performed. So, to quickly understand what's going on here, let's stop this. Um, we can jump into the graph editor right here, click this button, and boom. Right now, nothing's showing, but if we click on position, it automatically shows us something. Now, if we click position of the next one, it shows us something different. The next one shows us something a little different, a little different, a little different. So first off, this is a speed graph. Now when you click position keyframes, um, the graph editor assumes you're wanting to see the speed graph. Now, if we're looking at the rotation, the graph editor may assume you're wanting to see a value graph, which is a little different. So on our keyboard, hit P for position. Right here, um, we can go to show speed graph always show speed graph or always show value graph or auto select graph type so after effects kind of figures what graph type you want to see but in this case we're looking at the speed graph now what you're seeing is different values of the same keyframes so so basically what this is saying is it kind of eases in and flows over to the end now editor number three is it eases in a little slower speeds up in the middle and slows down towards the end. Editor number four is it goes in pretty slow, speeds up in the middle a good bit, slows down towards the end. And at editor five, as you can see, really slow, fast, and slow. So if you play these out, this editor right here starts off really slow, goes real fast and slow. So basically you can just click on one of these and it pulls up a little tool right here. You can zoom in a little bit, let's see what it looks like. I actually grab this and create motion like that now if we keep pulling this out you can kind of see what's going on now we have this turned on right here auto zoom graph height so we can see so if we change this up let's just change this up really crazy really quick and I'm all confused like where's my graph I don't know what's going on auto zoom graph height It'll keep it in tune for us. Cool. So we've completely manipulated the graph in such a way that it now looks like that. Just by changing the values inside the graph editor. And if you just manipulate these, you know, these anchor points in certain ways, you can really create some really interesting um, effects inside the graph editor just like that some really cool stuff now make a new composition we're gonna type my name and we're gonna edit the value graph and use it to make something really cool so grab this tool pan behind right here command click to make it ting in the middle click on your keyboard rotation move this over in 180 degrees so it rotates around itself now same like just like last time it's gonna go over just like that turn motion blur on make it a little faster just like that really simple nothing too crazy we go into the graph right now our speed graph is selected but it's not exactly what we want to use now we can manipulate it so we can actually grab that, 
make it kind of cool. It's a little nicer. But if we go to edit value graph, it gives us some different options. Now, if we auto select this graph, it's going to assume on rotation we need the value graph because that's what you would normally use it for. But I like to manually select it to add value graph. So now, this is your value. So actually, the numbers, the degrees. So you can see the degrees right here. It's the same thing. So we can actually grab this and pull it down below zero on the graph. And what this is going to do is actually go below zero degrees and then past it. So it's going to wiggle and move back some. So just like that. So up and around, up and around, just because we took the graph and we pulled it down some. Now if we take the 150 degrees up here and pull it up, we can go above our final result and actually have a really cool dynamic graph. Kind of neat, pull it out a little more. And just by editing the value graph really quickly, we can make a really cool dynamic animation. Pull these back some, just like that. And just barely manipulating this, you can make something really awesome, and it's a very powerful tool. And I'll let you play with it a lot more, but as you can see, I think that looks really awesome. And then we can go back to our value graph, or speed graph, excuse me, and actually you know, really make this quick. Insanely fast, but insanely cool. Or let's do it like this right here. And you can see it's below zero because the values change on the other side. So yeah, it's a really cool way to jump into the graph editor, start editing, it's super simple, but there's a lot more things you can do and explore with this tool. But just understanding what the graph is and what how it affects animation can really make you a powerful editor. Now, there are tools to circumvent the graph editor and do different things, but I think in this case, um, it's good to understand the basics of the graph editor and what it means and go on from there. Now, I don't use all these tools down here. I like the auto zoom tool, and I usually jump between the value and speed graph depending on what I'm animating. But all this other stuff, I kind of leave alone because I usually manually put it in. But, as always, I'm Max. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found this helpful. And feel free to like and subscribe. And before I forget, I recently broke a 1,000 subscribers and I posted a video about it. And I'm doing a giveaway from now on. So go check that video out, learn more details, and sign up. And hopefully, you can win a gaming mouse. Other than that, I'm Maxwell. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.